All right, hi and good morning. Thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update on Tuesday, November 24th. Uh, my name is Ashley Edwards and with me right now uh, is Lee Falk and Vince Desitel, and we'll have Jason Holmes joining us later on in this news update. To get us started, I'm going to turn it over to Lee to talk a little bit about some of the weather and field conditions in North Louisiana. Hi, Ashley and uh, Vince and everybody. Glad to be here today and, and nice to visit with you all. Uh, as far as our weather and pasture conditions, kind of what we on the northern end of the state, specifically the northwestern part of the state, dry is the word right now. Uh, we're the driest we've been all year, I would say, um, up in our corner of the world, and uh, pastures are dried out. Um, we, we were visiting before we started recording and uh, we're able to put some fertilizer down on areas, uh, ryegrass fields and whatnot that ordinarily we wouldn't be able to drive on this time of the year. Um, ryegrass, since I brought it up, is looking good here. We're really getting some really good early season growth or early to mid season growth, however you want to put it. Uh, that's kind of untypical for this time of the year. We've had some pretty warm temperatures. Rain is a limiting factor, as I said. We just don't have quite the moisture to get the, the tremendous growth. But uh, the thing that stands out in my mind in our part of the world right now is the clover. We had a really, really good clover last year, uh, last spring, last late winter and early spring. Um, and it looks like we're setting ourselves up for that again this year. Uh, I've seen more white cl uh, white clover this flowering and, and cattle grazing on clover already this time of the year, which is uh, really uncharacteristic for our part of the world during a normal uh, fall season such as this, especially before Thanksgiving. Um, we got some cattle producers that are nearing able to turn some cattle out on uh, some planted ryegrass pastures. Uh, most cattlemen in our part of the world have started feeding hay. There may be a few holdouts, some, got some really light stocking rates that may be holding steady and trying to get a little bit more uh, usage out of that, those summer pastures, but that's pretty much uh, going by the wayside now and they're in the minority. Uh, talked to a couple of producers here lately that have had a, a few problems with some acorn poisoning, oak acorns but uh, not a very big problem this year. Um, so it's one of those things to watch. I know we've talked about it before in past news updates, but I always like to bring that up and everything. Things are looking pretty good here as far as in the forecast. It's looking like we're going to get some rain this week, hopefully avoid some storms and, and definitely to get the moisture. Things will be looking really good going into this late November, early December time. That's all I've got, Ashley. All right, thank you. Vince, I'll turn it over to you. Um, same thing, just kind of what's going on in terms of the weather and the fields there in central and south Louisiana. Sure, Ashley, thanks, and thank you for having me today. Uh, kind of, you know, same scenario here in the central part of the state, and as we move further south, uh, it's it's pretty dry for this time of the year, uh, which, is, which is not uncommon to be somewhat dry, but we haven't had any significant rains um, following the hurricanes in our, uh, I guess it was early October. Uh, so we're we're pretty much in need of rain uh, to get some ryegrass stands you know, flushed out and, and uh, top dressed, uh, which as Lee mentioned, you know, we're anticipating that front coming through with, with a little bit of rain on Wednesday. So hopefully we get that. And there is uh, quite a few people scurrying around today and tomorrow to get some top dress out, uh, but we definitely need it. Uh, there's some ryegrass stands that are really good. People that planted after Hurricane Delta, which gave us about 12 inches of rain, uh, have good stands of ryegrass. Those who planted prior to that storm, uh, a lot of stands were compromised by flooding where they had to reseed and they way behind the eight ball at this point. So um, quite a bit of hay being fed at this point in time because we were really have been really dry <clears throat> the last 60 days or so. And a lot of supplements are going out right now. Um, so as we move forward, uh, you know, we, we hit 80 degrees for several days here in the last couple of weeks. And uh, you can see some stands of ryegrass diminishing and plenty of birds out there. So that indicates that we've had plenty, plenty of uh, populations of armyworms out there. Uh, several people had to treat for them in their ryegrass. So that's, that's been an issue here the last two or three weeks. Um, 
you know, as I mentioned, you know, a lot of supplementing of cows and bulls ahead of the breeding season. Um, we have some situation where producers actually have good enough ryegrass. They put their bulls in ryegrass until breeding season. So uh, it's 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 depending on when you planted your ryegrass. If it was uh, prior to or after Hurricane Delta, um, you either you either headed the curve or behind the eight ball. So uh, a lot of people are pinning cows right now and palpating. Uh, doing some preg checking you know to, to get some culling done before the winter feeding period begins so that's kind of where we're at and uh talked to several people down south of i-10 uh, over the weekend uh, at a cattle show and and they're having trouble getting ryegrass established because it's so dry that's which is uh, unusual for you know south of i-10 not not getting uh, rainfall at this time of the year with any kind of frontal uh, passage or, or even warm fronts coming off the gulf so uh, it's been an unusual year, to, needless to say. That's about all I have, actually, at this point. All right, thank you. Yeah, I feel like we've talked about army worms um, basically every news update since we started these back in March or April. Um, and it is, it's just been kind of crazy, like you said. This year's just been very unusual and odd in terms of, you know, which parts of the state are wet versus dry and um, who's seen what 2020s it's been something for the books for sure um, I want to just touch for just a second uh, a few reminders for management um, in general so you know those of you that um, have had a fall calving season make sure you're updating your records uh, make sure you're getting all of your weights in your tags down um, calculate your calving percentages Vince just mentioned you know going through and palpating and and going through your keep call decisions. So um, make sure you're, you're actually calculating all those numbers and looking into that. We do, of course, recommend to pregnancy check. Um, it's worth it, it pays for it in the long run. So uh, get your vet out and get that done. Also too, for those of you that are gonna start looking at calving um, coming up January, February, um, you know, go through your calving box, um, through all of your supplies, double check and make sure you have everything Start looking ahead of time because shipping during the holidays for absolutely anything, even if it's not a Christmas gift, um, can be kind of uh, tedious and take some extra time. So we encourage you to go through those supplies. If you have questions on calving supplies and getting ready for that, um, I have an article that we sent out in the pasture to market this past January, so January of 2020. Um, I don't think that version's online anymore, but I can definitely send it to you. Um, I put all of our contact information in the video and podcast description. So um, I can send you that. It's got a list of supplies, talks about uh, how to heat colostrum and milk properly for those calves and all of those good things. So just in general, um, start to prep for winter, start to prep for the crazy swings in weather that we're going to have any of the severe uh, cold temperatures or anything that we might see throughout the state. Um, we encourage you to go ahead and look at all of your equipment and supplies for that. And so with that, um, we are going to take a short break and then I'll come back with Jason and he's going to do the market updates in just a moment. All right, we're back uh, with Jason Holmes now. And earlier, uh, Jason Vince was talking a little bit about uh, getting ready for the winter, winter season. Um, so making sure we've got all of our supplemental feeding and everything together. He also touched a little bit on going through and preg checking cows um, and making some keep coal decisions. Do you mind touching just a little bit about body condition scores and what producers should be looking at in terms of that when they go into um, into the colder weather and into the winter season? Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so just, uh, just briefly, uh, Wanted to visit with you all about uh, making sure you're keeping a check on those body condition scores uh, of your cow herd. So um, very importantly, those fall calvers. Uh, we already know that the fall season is a difficult transition period in terms of forages. Uh, just trying to keep a, an adequate amount of protein and uh, energy in front of that cow herd when they're calving. Um, is a challenge anyway for us in Louisiana, but uh, specifically in the fall of the year. So uh, it's all about trying to get cows rebred. So um, if, we, if we're if we trying to um, get those cows rebred as quickly as possible uh, after that calving season, you know, we need to keep a check on body condition scores. So just remember that, uh, that goal uh, for that mature cow herd is a body condition score of five. Um, I'm sure Dr. Edwards can uh, can link our 
uh, our body condition scoring chart uh, in the description of the video um, that you can go on. We've got a really good chart that outlines uh, what we're talking about in terms of those different body condition scores. So uh, we're trying to get that five. Um, and anything higher than that, you'll see a lot of data out there that shows that we can get cows rebred faster if we get them higher than that, but it gets into economics then. So it's just not economical to feed the, that mature cow herd to a body condition score of seven or eight, which you'll see some of those really good numbers out there, but uh, just gets uh, where it's not economical to feed them to that point. So uh, just try to keep, uh, keep that mature cow herd, a body condition score of five, um, any heifers that may be calving, remember they need to be a step higher, so they need to be a body condition score of six. Um, and just keep a, keep an eye on them. Don't let them slip too much uh, during the fall of the year, especially those that are lactating right now with young calves on. All right, thank you. Um, and what, what are the markets looking like? I know I've gotten several emails on market updates today from Cattle Facts and other sources, but um, just kind of tell us what, what we're seeing now as we go into Thanksgiving holidays. So we're really not looking that bad. Um, and there was uh, quite a bit of movement around, but uh, in the, as it ended up the week, uh, it's really, really not that bad. Um, and I watched a couple of online sales this past week that, uh, and the highs looked good, but the lows, uh, they were, <laughs> they were pretty low. Uh, but uh, I know a lot of those sellers, they probably caught some of those calves uh, before they got too low on them. But uh, it's um, we know that that calf market this time of year is never the greatest anyway. But uh, the good news is, is that we are still getting some moisture across the wheat belt. Uh, so there is a place to go for those uh, those wheat grazers. So we'll jump right into it. The five area feeding region. Uh, fed steer negotiated cash sales closed the week at 105 to 109. Uh, that's three dollars lower than a week ago. Uh, most recent quotes show February futures trading two dollars and forty five cents up at 113.10. April is up two dollars and thirty seven cents at 116.82, and June is up two dollars and fifty two cents at 111.75. So um, it's a uh, it's optimistic to see that we've still got some some positive sides to the board on those fed cattle. Five to six hundred pound steers, medium large ones and two sold between 138 and 149. So that's about three to four dollars higher than we could go level. Seven hundred to eight hundred pound feeder steers, medium large ones and two sold between 120 and 136. And those are ending up the week of about a dollar to nine dollars lower than a week ago. Uh, on that same class of cattle, January futures currently trading up three dollars and forty-five cents at one thirty-eight oh five. March is up three dollars and twelve cents at one thirty-seven fifty, and April is up two dollars and ninety cents at one thirty-nine oh seven. So again, positive board on those feeder type cattle. Lean coal cows uh, did remain steady from the previous week. Uh, they range from forty-three cents to forty-six cents a pound. Uh, which is which is basically steady. Uh, the cat the monthly cattle on feed report uh, did come out uh, last Friday, so that uh, that report did contain um, a few surprises uh, with only the placements altered slightly from what we expected in pre-release guesses. Um, cattle and calves on feed for the slaughter market in the United States for feedlots with a capacity of a thousand or more head. Total 12 million head on November 1st, 2020. Uh, that inventory was 1% above November 1, 2019. Uh, placements, like I said a while ago, was only um, only surprise in the report. So placements in feedlots uh, during October total 2.19 million head, uh, which is 11% below uh, 2019 levels. So moving on to our feedstuffs, uh, soybean meal uh, trading a dollar higher at $408 a ton. Soybean hulls are steady at $120 a ton. Corn gluten feed meal is up $17.50 at $595 a ton. DDGs are still steady at $177.50 a ton. 
Cotton seed meal is up $40 at $390 a ton. Whole cotton seed is up $15 at $260 a ton. Rice bran is steady at $125. Corn is up $0.13 cents a bushel at $4.35 a bushel. So uh, yet again, for another week, we're seeing most of our feedstuffs are still trading up in the market, which uh, uh, that does put pressure on our feeders. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the next time we visit uh, uh, where we are in terms of commodity prices, if we're still trending upward and what kind of pressure that's putting on our uh, on our feed, uh, on our feed lots. Uh, and that wraps it up, Ashley. All right, thank you. And so I'll take that and kind of segue. The next time we are going to be with y'all for a news update um, will be Tuesday, December 8th. That is also our next uh, monthly webinar. So we have Mr. Boo Persica, who is the um, meat lab manager at LSU. So Jason and I went down there and um, got some content for that webinar. We're really excited about it. Um, the title for that is going to be Beef for the Holidays. And so Jason and Boo both um, will be going over some different cuts and things that um, you can use in your family's um, meals, but also to kind of give you an overview of what you're doing and how it impacts the customers and what they're getting at Christmas um, and year round. So we're really excited about that one. I think it's going to be kind of a good swap up for us um, to go ahead and look at um, the end product side of things. So we will be back with y'all, like I said, Tuesday, December 8th. Um, you'll get a double dose of us with a news update and with the webinar, which again is live. So um, check out our website, uh, lsuagcenter.com forward slash beef brunch. I'll link all of that uh, as well as the body condition score information that Jason mentioned earlier um, in the video and podcast description. And with that, we hope that y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we will see y'all in a couple of weeks.